Hey everyone, Alex from O'Brien here. In this video, I'm going to give you some useful information for taking an open tray implant impression. And if you aren't aware, open tray impressions are the type that require a hole in the impression tray, which gives access to unscrew the coping. And this allows the impression coping to stay in the tray when the impression is pulled from the mouth. Now, in order to take the impression, you will need an open tray impression coping, which is also known as a direct transfer or pickup coping. And it's important that you only use an impression coping that is designed for open tray technique to avoid an inaccurate impression. Open tray impression copings are designed with heavy retention elements that prevent them from being removed from the tray once the impression material is set up. They have hard edges and deep features that provide retention and allow the impression material to lock them into place. The other thing you'll need is a tray with a hole in it at the side of the implant. Now your lab can make you a custom tray with the hole already in place, or you can take a stock tray and create the hole with a grinding burr. And if you're going to create the hole in a stock tray, it may be easiest to determine the correct location of the hole after you've placed the impression coping under the implant. Now once you remove the healing abutment, you'll attach that transfer coping to the implant. And this can be done by inserting the coping into the tissue until you hit resistance from the implant interface. Then, slowly rotate the coping while applying very slight pressure so that when rotational alignment is achieved, the transfer coping will drop and seat completely into the implant. There are usually multiple different rotations in which the impression coping can be attached. If the implant has a six-sided internal interface, for example, the impression coping can be placed in one of six different locations. Generally, it doesn't matter which rotation you choose, but sometimes a specific rotation might fit better within the interproximal space. The impression coping screw can be hand torqued and a torque driver is not necessary. When you're torquing in the screw though, you shouldn't feel any resistance. If you do feel resistance, there's a good chance that the impression coping is not completely seated on one side and therefore the threads of the screw aren't completely lined up with the internal threads of the implant. With the impression coping in place, we always recommend that you take an x-ray to evaluate whether the impression coping is fully seated. And once you've verified that the impression coping is in fact seated, you're ready to prepare the tray. Now, if you're using a stock tray, place the tray in the mouth to see where the impression coping is in relation to the tray. Then remove the tray from the mouth and grind out the hole in that location. After you've created the hole, place the tray back in the mouth to make sure the hole was created in the correct location. And depending on the length of the impression coping, it may not actually stick through the tray. The important thing is that the screw can be easily accessed and removed through that hole. Now if needed, make some additional adjustments to the tray to ensure the impression coping or the impression coping screw will fit passively through the hole. It's recommended that you only use medium or heavy body impression material for implant impressions as the greater viscosity will help to maintain positional accuracy. Since you aren't trying to capture a margin, the wash material isn't as necessary. If you do use some light body material, just keep it to a minimum so that the majority of the impression coping is captured in the heavier material. After you've placed the loaded tray into the mouth, it can be helpful to wipe away the impression material around the portion of the impression coping screw that's sticking out of the tray. Once the impression material has set, you'll unscrew and remove the impression coping screw and then pull the tray from the mouth. Your lab can attach the analog to the impression coping when they receive the impression, but if you want to attach it yourself, it's just important to prevent the impression coping from rotating inside of the tray. And this can be achieved by first attaching the analog completely to the impression coping, making sure that it's fully seated. Now, as you hold the analog in place, slowly and lightly tighten the screw. If you tighten that screw too quickly or aggressively, the impression coping will start to rotate as soon as the screw is completely tightened. I hope you found this video helpful, and as always, feel free to contact us with any questions. See you next time.